Hello, my name is Dinesh Badram and I'm here to speak to you today about the use of RT-QPCR testing on the COVID-19 virus. So COVID-19 or the coronavirus or also known as SARS-CoV-2 is a virus that affects the respiratory system. It was found in late 2019 in Wuhan, China and spread throughout the world, causing a great global pandemic that continues to today. This virus, it greatly affects the respiratory system. It has symptoms of shortness of breath, fever, and many other complications, and it caused many people to pass away. And the virus was very contagious. It is a virus that is RNA based and how these viruses work is that these are pieces of infected cells that are fragments of infected cells that bind to cells in the body and because they're RNA based they alter the instruction of the proteins and changes them to cause um, problematic proteins to form. Now, one of the main tests to see if you have COVID-19 is through RT-PCR testing or reverse transcription quantitative polymerase chain reactions. These tests, what they do is they will take that RNA that the virus is based on and we will try to go into the reverse to figure out the DNA of that virus to see if it's present in the individual. And this sort of test is an in vitro test, which means it happens in a laboratory setting or outside of the body setting. So before we talk about COVID-19, I'll just give a little introduction as to what DNA and RNA are. They're both sets of instructions that lead to protein production in the body. So DNA are a set of nucleic acids that consists of thymine, cytosine, adenine, and guanine. And there is the process of transcription where there is pairing of these nucleic acid bases and that will lead to the code of RNA. And RNA consists of uracil, cytosine, adenine, and guanine. And that RNA, through the process of translation, then will lead to protein production. So these bases, they pair with one another from the DNA to RNA. And then that instructions leads to the formation of proteins. So with this PCR testing that is done, we are taking advantage of the fact that we can go in the reverse and we have the RNA of the virus and we need to look and see if the person is infected. So what we're going to do is we use this PCR testing to get to the DNA strand and when we get to that DNA strand of the virus, we can tell if the person has the virus or not. So it is a process. So the first step is to take a sample of um, RNA from the person. So the most common way is through a nasopharyngeal swab. And the swab is inserted into the nose and afterwards the specimen is collected and then afterwards we take that specimen we take that sample and we're going to purify it so what that means is we're going to remove any contaminants that it may have or we are going to get rid of any debris and we are also going to run that sample into an incubator. 
So what the incubator would do is it will store that purified sample of RNA and what it will do next is it will perform the process of reverse transcription. So earlier I spoke about DNA going to RNA through the process of transcription through the base pairs. However, with reverse transcription, we're doing the opposite. We have the RNA and we're going back to the DNA. So what we do is we are going to put our RNA sample in the incubator and it will take the base pairs for the DNA and it will make many, many copies of the cDNA, the results from the reverse transcription. And what we will do is we will also tag that DNA with a fluorescent signal. So fluorescence is like the neon light that, that happens. So we're going to tag those DNAs. And those tags, they bind to DNA that have um, the virus DNA on them. So it will tell those, it, it will bind if it has um, the virus. Afterwards, what we're going to do is we're going to see how many bind to the fluorescent tags. And then we can quantify or we can tell how many of these these um, infected cells that we have. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph it. Um, we have the number of cycles on the x-axis. We have the amount of fluorescence on the y-axis. And what we're going to do is we're going to look and see how many we have. So typically what happens is we have a plateau and once that plateau happens after a certain amount of fluorescence is reached, um, that's what will indicate to us if a person has the COVID-19 virus or not. There is also the cycle threshold, the CT value, and what we have to do is to make sure that our test was ran properly is we need to subtract the experimental the experimental probes from the control. So as we know in any experiment, we have to have a control present to remove any bias from any external factors that have to do with the experiment. So we normalize that and then we'll look and see our curve and see if the fluorescence value was the threshold line was high enough to show that the virus was present. So this process of RT-QPCR is done to tell if people have COVID-19 virus and it is very, very reliable and it is a very, very simple process. It may take some time, but once it is done, it can most likely tell if a person has the virus or not. Thank you.